Right, this is Sheila, November 2010, and I'm just going back to the summer when I went on a family tree trip to Suffolk. I've just done a tape on um, St Mary Creeting a minute ago with the Brooks family and the Miles family originated, or were definitely married there, Richard Brooks to Martha Miles. Um, I went off to find another church and got lost down some track and got a bit stressed, so I sort of didn't play the whole of that end of that tape. This is like a continuation now. After leaving St Mary Creeting, I go off to Earl Stoneham and then I wander all over the place, with the destination being Debenham in Suffolk, where we've got a lot of connections with Stuttvilles mainly as well, and of course going back in time, Peshes, Peverells, Declares. All sorts of people with it, Debenham. Borley. Borley is another family I need to investigate to, who married a Stutville. Stutville's, of course, been our medieval ancestors who came over with William the Conqueror. And we did have quite a big Suffolk presence, although they're mainly s spoken of in uh, Northumberland and up north, Yorkshire and all that, the Stutville's are, but they had a big Suffolk presence as well. Um, right. So here we go then. This is Sheila arriving at Earl Stoneham after having got a bit lost after leaving Mar St Mary Creeting. Right, we're at a place called Earl Stoneham there and I've arrived at the church of St Olaf. I've actually got here. It was very complicated but I managed to get here in the end. I'm absolutely starving though so I might have to have another jelly. Right, after this I should be going to Debenham and I go up the A... 1120 for about a mile, and then I turn off onto the B1077 to Debenham. Then I turn around, come back down so I can go to Clopton and the Beanings. Right, this isn't St. Olaf's, this is St. Mary's Earl Stoneham. So I don't know when St. Olaf's went, that, that, that girl was on about. Well, I just will have a look round now I'm here. It's not far from St Mary Creeting anyway, so it's worth doing, isn't it? The main chaplain, again. He has a Jack Chaplain, died in 1988, 53. Well, that's quite a common name around here, isn't it? There's a Peter Thomas Hales. There's another chaplain over there, Chapel Chaplain. He was 56 when he died in 1994. Kathleen Chaplin, yeah, there's a big chaplain presence here. Right, so, because it's so close to, um, Mary Creeting, it's worth me recording this church. Yeah, I spoke to some young lady and her family preparing the church for her wedding on Saturday. Um, yeah, she was saying there is a redundant church further up the road on the A40 that she thinks might be relevant. Um, no, this is St Mary's Earl Stoneham. So somewhere around here I was going to come to camp. I was going to do this area. Right. Open it for now. Right, so now when I get to Debenham, Debenham is of interest. Because it's where the stop bills. It's where the stop bills lived before they moved to Dulham. Down this road in a minute, I think. This one here. Yeah. 
right, so that's the relevance of coming here. It's a long time ago, there won't be any graves to a stuck I doubt it very much. But, uh, you know, you just feel like you've got to visit the place, really, because <coughs> they're mentioned here. In the uh, records of that, Debenham. In fact, what I think is one of the Thomas Stuckvilles was born here, and then they moved on to Dulham. There's lots of Thomas Stuckvilles, there's one of them. I can't think of everything at the moment, but uh, everything's recorded. I'm going back to the 1400s. with us on holiday. Me and her on the way back I think we passed through here. Um, but she wouldn't have been interested really. Family tree stuff. Right, we're now entering a place called Comic Green. It's not very clear on the thing. But uh, um, Devonham was supposed to be on this road as well. Probably the next village, or be another signpost in a minute. It's a way of seeing the Suffolk countryside when you come out in, into the middle of nowhere. Baker's Lane, no through road. Winter, oh, this is called Winston Green, where I am at the moment. Winston Green. You can use those sat nav things, but I think you miss an awful lot because a lot of my stuff is very unplanned and very spontaneous. And, and, and if you're following rigidly to a sat nav, I think you, you miss things. And here, yeah, I find my way around mainly by getting lost. And I discover other things. But I thought I, had a, I, thought I could see a church then. What I can remember, I thought. Debenham Church was quite big. Of course, it's the early part of our history. Well, we're over this way. Now, there is a castle, Framlington Castle. But I've got no idea if that, what connection that's got, if any, because I haven't got it circled or anything. See a church, I reckon it is the one. Because you've got to make sure you've got petrol when you come out in these places. You never see a petrol station out in, out in the sticks here. So never come out here unless you've got half a tank, because at minimum half a tank. So I just lived out and about in these places. Right, well we've got Farming and Ipswich and it's interesting. I should imagine, it's, it's not mentioned anymore, but I should imagine Debenham must be up this way, Winston that way. I'll pull over in a minute just to check it. Well, I'll see what that church is. We've got Debenham Village Trail. The Village Trail leaflet shows some of the most notable village buildings are available from the Resource Centre. The church and other places as our local accommodation activities. Discover the history of Debenham by following the Village Trail. Debenham lies near the source of the River Devon, from which the village derives its name. This thriving agricultural centre at the heart a high tuffet built its wealth on dairy produce. It supplied butter to London and other towns and cities. 
as well as hard Suffolk cheese, which was favoured by the Navy for its keeping qualities. The village has many buildings dating from the 16th century with fine architectural features, later fa facades with which wealthy merchants improved their houses, often concealing older buildings. When it was recorded in the Doomsday Book of 1086, Dublin was already a substantial place. These Anglian kings are said to have held court here, and legend had it that blood field on the outskirts was named after a battle against the Danes. It is not known when Dublin was first settled, but there is evidence of the Romans and the early English. St Mary Magdalene, however, has, has in its tower what is described as the best Saxon Norman stonework in Suffolk. At number 56, the High Street is the oldest house in Dublin and probably 14th century, originally a single-ended Walden house. the oldest, go all the way along one side, yeah, you just work your way up, go past the church, not past the church, um, what is it, number 24, Grace Church Street, the Merchant House, a late 6th century hall house, extended in the, the 15th century, built over the foundations of an earlier building, possibly the church of St Mary of Grace. Debenham has a wealth of interconnected and circular walks, footpaths and bridleways. Red Lion House, number 10. A carved 16th century dragon post protrudes from the corner of Red Lion House, which in 1463 was described as Le Yelginhus, the house where Elle was brewed. Forester's Hall, number two. Uh, 1905. This building was once used by the ancient order of foresters. The order began in 1834, but its origins lie in a much older society called the Royal Foresters, formed in the 18th century. The members felt a duty to assist their fellow men who fell into need as they walked through the forest of life. It also features an antique shop in Lovejoy TV series. So, I'll tape you, I'm taping as I go round. Yeah, all right. Oh, well, I'll do a little bit, so I'll get your accent. Right, there, I'm just picking up a local man who um, sounds like he comes from Australia or New Zealand because a lot of um, convicts and people who were transported to Australia actually came from East Anglia, and uh, that's something I learnt in 2006, that a lot of people from East Anglia sound like Australians and New Zealanders. But it's really the Australians and New Zealanders who sound like East Anglians. It's the other way around. But anyway, this man has comes on the tape now and gives us a little narration about various things about the village. Although his ancestors, ancestors come from um, Scotland. I think they're the McDonald's. So anyway, back to this gentleman. What happened there? Uh, what happened there? Uh, Cromwell came to the church. Well, his troops came to the church. Yeah. And they, there were some statues outside, you know, about 15 foot up. So they got ropes and pulled all, smashed all the statues up. So what were the statues of? Well, religious statues. Oh, I religious see. Priests. Yeah, anything to do with could religion. Be, yeah, it could be yeah. Mary or anything. Yeah. You know? But they, uh, what they did then, they. They decided to stay overnight, so they took the horses in the church. Yeah, they did so that, they didn't they? Made muck everywhere, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, they and did then, that everywhere, yeah. Funny, but the next day, they got the local council together and charged them for the work they had to do. Oh, really? They, re they wrecked a place. And yeah, they charged. They charged. Uh, oh, sort of yeah. Really terrible. Yeah, it's a lovely village there, isn't it? Oh, a lot nice, in Suffolk's yeah. got a lot of um, fish. Suffolk has got a lot of history, uh, and they've got a lot, I mean I come from Somerset, my f family yeah, moved yeah. over that way, but 
Yeah. I haven't got any roots in Somerset. No. All my family are over this way. Uh. So my mother went during the war. Oh, right, uh, yeah. And um, I was born after the war. And Where did you live? Because your accent is different to the people around here. Yeah, Western Super Mare. Oh, Western Super Mare. Well, in oh, Somerset, yeah. Yeah, yeah I see. Yeah, so my yeah. mother was evacuated yeah. and stayed there. And then oh, she didn't want to go back. She was from London. But yeah. if you go beyond my mum, she, yeah. they came from over this way. Her, her, her grandmother and everything came from this yeah. way. So. Yeah, oh, and, um, yeah. So I think you can't I, guess where my family come from. Well, the thing is, you've got like an Australian accent, but... I know, but people say that all the while. Yeah, but it's not, though. No, no, it it's isn't. It's a Suffolk no. accent, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a... Uh, I've I reckon it. a lot of people went to Australia from Suffolk because the They did. I know, I know the reason. Yeah, the I accent was, is I was so... On, uh, I was on holiday. I was in Canada. And I ordered a, a pint at the bar. And a, a couple of yanks, uh, a bloke and a woman said... Um, how things down under? I said, oh, fantastic. Yeah. I kept them going for about ten minutes. Yeah, I know. Until eventually I said, oh, I don't really come from us. No, I tell you so what. So anyway, yeah. he, said, uh, I, he said, well, you speak like one. I said, no, they speak like us. Yeah. I said, we went there. Yeah, I they've said, That's taken what it's the all Suffolk about. accent with them. But my family come from Scotland. Yeah. They were all jocks, all my family. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you get yeah. around. I've got a few up there as well. Have you? Yeah, they're, they're, they're everywhere, yeah, actually. Yeah, I know, they do, they travel. <laughs> well, a lot of mine, they... Um, well, well, different sides of the family. What I'm saying, this is my mum's side. Yeah. So, and then there's my dad's side, yeah. of course. And then there's other grandparents who have well, family yeah. come from somewhere yeah. else, you know. Yeah. But there's well, a big, big... They group. started moving out of Scotland because all my family were more coal miners. Oh, right, yeah. Except for my father, but he was a mining engineer. He was actually connected with it the same. Yeah. And, um... They came out. They went to the states, didn't they? They went over there back in the twenties. Yeah, I got, I got lots of people that went to yeah. the states and and to Australia as well. Yeah. So I went in the Great Gold Rush. Yeah. In the 1850s, oh, right. I yeah, had yeah, um, the Gold Rush. One yeah. of my, my great grandmother's brothers and yeah. her some of her cousins, they all emigrated to Australia for yeah. the Great Gold Rush. Right, yeah. And they stayed there, and yeah. they're buried there, and I'm in contact with them now. Yeah. But recently, you know, yeah. they didn't know well, about us. Yeah, uh, you see, they started getting the family tree thing together. Yeah, that's, that's right. Well, I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm starting next week. Yeah, I've done a lot. I've been doing it for ten years, mind. Well, I've never, I've never attempted it, but I, you see, the trouble is, is this: the only thing I know about it, my father, yeah, he, he came down from Scotland. He was in about 1920 odd, and um, he was an airman. Oh right. So he got stationed at Marlton, ah, which yeah. was a, an experimental air force base. Yeah. So of course he met my mother in Ipswich, and they got, they they got married. But when I went to the records office in Ipswich, get to see me, they said yeah. we've got no record of anybody getting married. I thought well, perhaps they didn't, but they did. Well, they, they might have got married. Now they got married in Scotland. Ah, so right. Now yeah. What, what I've got yeah. to do now? Yeah, the Scottish records online. Are you on the internet? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. can probably trace them through that. Yes, you probably could. Yeah, you get that but online. You what, can do it actually ha what actually happened, um, I managed to get his Air Force number. Oh, so that's really the good. Air Force. He's English, you want American then. <laughs> no, he was a Scotsman. Yeah, yeah I, I know, I, yeah, yeah. I asked them, I said, look, they said it'll cost you 30 quid. Yeah. And what they'll do is, they will send me all his service record. Yeah, right, that's very good. Then, on top of that, where he would, where he came from, where he was born. I know he's yeah. born in Hamilton. Yeah. That's how they yeah. Glasgow, born in Hamilton. But they will also give me the names of his parents and yeah. everything. You see, so then I can move back. Well, she's not in that. If you go online, there's some, lots yeah. of free stuff where you don't have to pay. It? I didn't know that. The, um, where you can that. find out um, the censuses. 1881 is free for, for everybody if you go to 1881 yeah, you don't yeah. have to pay there's a lot of free ones yeah, I, yeah. I go on the internet I do a lot of work I also yeah. pay because I, um, for another site I use Ancestry.com because they are so brilliant they've got such a lot of stuff that, yeah. and I use it every day yeah, and yeah. I find it's worth the money that is, that's good for us but you go but, uh, you know, Scotland's got its own censuses as well they're very, I think actually they're a bit they're a bit improved up there on the English yeah. system they reckon they're better at doing yeah. that. I don't know. But it's in Edinburgh, obviously. Yeah, but well, England have always been a bit slow, yeah. haven't they? But, um, yeah. yeah, they've got a good, they've got a good system, system going. But the only, yeah, I've the been only on trouble, it. Yeah, the been only on trouble it. with it is, I probably wouldn't be able to go back any further than about 1750. Oh, right, why is that? Because my name is MacDonald and I lived in clans. Oh, right. Everybody in that clan had the yeah. same name. 
so you wouldn't know who. Well, maybe you don't you. have to go that much further. You just know you're one well, of them. It wouldn't it'd be but, nice to get. But nice to know if you were, if you, if you. Well, yeah, it would be nice to know who your great grandfathers were, wouldn't it? Well, I know, I do know a bit about it. My grandfather was what they call a shot. I've got to turn that off a minute. Just right, number fifty-six is a really old Tudor-looking building. Yeah, that was really useful. I would have loved to have taped him for longer, but what happened was I was very short on tape, and I actually had to keep it for when I was going around the church and wandering around the village. But I'd love to have carried on taping him because obviously he, he was new to Family Tree. But you know, it's always nice to to meet other people, get different feedback. Right, back to the tape. I've just been talking to a young gentleman who I've got on record as well. He's just started doing history, but he does a lot of building work around here and renovations, and he said um, he does a lot of work on buildings that are known to be, say, 15th century, but they turn out to be even older. Uh, yeah, the antique show here is Lovejoy, I think the film was. I've just taken a picture of that anyway. There's a lot of history in this place. There were various battles that took place. There's a place called Blood Lane and Bloodfield where battles were taking place. Number 42 looks pretty old. You can tell by the beams and everything. Rose Cottage it's called. And then I come to the church of St Mary Magdalene. I'm going to go and do that first. There's a little fish and chip shop here. Right near the church, on the same side as the church, got more Tudor looking buildings. Um, something called the Meadows, I don't know what that is. The Heart of Suffolk Group. More oldie worldy buildings. Number 31, 33, 37, 35. Opposite the old saddlery, and then we've got Bleak House. Imagine that! I'm going to take a picture of that. Because what we've got to remember is the Stutfields could possibly have been living in some of these churches here, um, houses here. did inside the church for some reason the tape at it all so um, there's nothing recorded when I was at um, yeah, I'm inside the church there I mean I was just going around looking at um, various stones and plaques and things like that to do with the Framlingham family, the doves there's not a lot I can remember. There weren't a lot of stained glass windows in there. So everything I'd done that was inside the church hasn't come out for some strange reason. And um, anything after that, nothing's come out. So I'm, what it is, since then I've travelled, I had a walk around the town. I didn't do a lot of taping actually. Thank goodness, on that side of the tape. Um, the player started eating the tape. Anyway, Unfortunately, I hadn't done a lot, but I've arrived at a church at Clopton now. now. And as I drove by further up in the village, I saw a place called Clopton Hall. Yeah, that was really annoying. I had a lot of trouble with that new tape recorder. I should be very reluctant to use it again. I might go back to the old one or start using my digital recorder. Um, it had done this on several occasions. It took me a while to work out that it was actually turning itself off. Uh, or chewing the tape and so you know I didn't realize and of course time was precious I didn't actually really realize any of that and um, right away and so didn't go back inside the church so anything I'd recorded when I was in there and there was stuff but I think I wrote something down in a little book as well but not a great deal of stuff but so that is really annoying do you know what I mean that um, something you've got to be aware of when you're going off 
to beware and always to check your equipment you know because I never had that problem in the past see so I wasn't expecting it to happen right so anyway I left Debenham I did take some photos I was very impressed with the place I really liked it there very pretty very medieval looking lots and lots of old houses and cottages um, well worth a visit and I want to go back there I wouldn't mind uh, visiting the blood field and going for some walks around there then I go off on a bit more of a wander then and I go up to a place called Clopton and I go in the church there as well mainly because of the association with the Cloptons the original Cloptons who took that name from one of the wives so here we go I'm at Clopton Church where there's a nice lady in there another nice warden church warden key holder who uh, lets me in and everything so I don't know if I might risk driving up that in a minute. Um, so I'm just going to take a picture of this church. It's Clopton Church. I don't even know what it's called as of yet. Um, there's lots of graves here. Obviously there's going to be nothing linked to the Stutvilles uh, um, and the Cloptons and the Depressions. I wouldn't have thought. Although they might mention it since the name Clopton is, is the name of that family. So what's it called, this place? St Mary the Virgin Clopton. Right, I'm going to take a picture now. I'm, going to, I'm walking up the pathway up to, back towards the church of Clopton. Now I'm going to go in the church first because they, start, they often start to close churches round about um, four o'clock-ish. This, it might not even be open. I might not, but I have seen a light inside, so it might be somebody. That's uh, the tower in the church. There's someone called Susanna Cratnell who died February the 10th, 1911, age 68. And also her husband, James, who died 1915, age 81. That's just a reference point. Here, anyway, I'm going to wait for me oh. little tape recorder. Um, I just it doesn't matter if I talk to you as well because what it is, it's for record for what you know. I'm doing my family tree. Um, yeah, these little angels are pretty, aren't they? Yeah, they're like Victorian. Oh yeah. Oh, they're they're not ancient. Then they're sort of. No, they're really stored. Like yeah. Are they got a meaning each one, or are they just? I think they represent... Is it the... the they represent... The Station of the Cross? The Apostles. Oh, the Apostles, yes. Peter's Key. Yeah, could be. Um, they're all, I don't know, Christ's Keys. They're all different, I think, than the Apostles. Um, or the paper. They're not paper seeds, no, they're the Apostles, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes they, they do the Stages of the Cross, don't they? Yes. Some people yeah, would be. They've actually got... Look, the hammer. Yeah, there's a... So that looks and that looks like um, a blacksmith, doesn't it? Well, yeah, no, it's and a, it's those tweezer things, I don't know what it's called. It's a saint, them. isn't it? They're not, it's either saints and apostles, I think. Yeah. Uh, I always notice, I like to look at the ceilings, yeah, because you... Ceilings are lovely, oh, it's up at churches. I, mean, I know, Simon, some, uh, there's, Simon Knott is a famous person who goes around doing all the churches, uh, and he puts them on the internet, and he does uh, a lot of work. Yes, yes. Uh, Simon does on the churches. Have you seen the one at... Where is it? It's not here. No, not here. Oh, I've got to read this in a moment, yeah. What I'm going to do is just read some of this. Sacred to the memory of those men of Clopton and certain others formerly resident therein who fell in the Great War in 1914 to 1919. So I'm just reading out their surnames. Adams, Barker, Broom, Branch, Dennett, Fenton, Halls, Norris, Potter... Hugh Ruffles, Smith, Smy, Smy, Right, Right. Their name liveth forevermore. Then we've got a great big plaque on the floor. Um, it could be the interred remains of somebody. Here, re re here resteth the body of Joseph Ty, gentleman late of Clopton, who departed this life August the 5th, Anno Domini, 1685. Uh, right, I've just been talking to a helpful lady in the side the church, another lady this time, who's um church warden or something. She told me I just missed out on um, uh, a group
group of three third age people and they have a lecture in there on the, hi on the, on the history of all around here and the church and everything. They had a, like a lecture in there and I, she said, you just missed it. You know, you could have joined in or sat in or something if you'd wanted. But all I'm doing is just having a quick look round. So obviously this church, if there is any link, link with the Cloptons of um, Long Melford, where there won't be any, there won't be any graves here or anything. It's just, just really getting a feel for the place. I've got to go on to a place called Grunsden or something, and then I shall start seeing signs for the Beelings. I don't think there was much more I was going to do. Because I always like to look out for names, so it'd be a shame not to look round the, the graveyard while I'm here. And, um, because you never know what you're going to see. And you think, oh, look at that lovely view, look. And there's a First World War soldier's grave here. N.G. Smy, acting leading Stoker, Royal Navy. HMS Intrepid, 27th of April 1918. He's got a beautiful view from Clopton over there. Across the fields. Mind you, some probably would have preferred to have stayed in the sea. Uh, who says Alfred? Dowsing, what have I seen? Having a name like that, that. Like. Is it a dowsing that um, went round? He was a witch finder, wasn't he? Yeah, it's a beautiful view. Some of these churchyards are very beautiful. So, for that minute. Right then, there was a cop, so there is a cops in the hall. <coughs> it's obviously been done up a lot, but it's quite old really underneath, according to the woman. But, um, I didn't bother going in there. Right, I'm going to finish this part of the tape now, right before going on to another one, because uh, I think, um, you know, that's long enough, really, half an hour. So, um, it was worthwhile going to see that Clopton Church and also to explore the Suffolk countryside and going to different places I haven't been before and, um, you know, gaining more information, new leads, all this sort of thing with the desire to return because there's so much more to find. So, this is Sheila, November the 3rd, 2000, or it could be the 2nd, I'm not quite sure, 2010, from Western Supermare, Somerset, where I live at the moment, in my new flat, lovely old Victorian flat I've got, it's very nice, I'm very happy with it, right then, over and out everybody.